Would you like to start every round of zombies with a purple starting weapon? Oh my! Well then, today's video is for you! Hello there! My name is Justin from Day Night, and today we are going to be walking you through round by round how to complete the D-Machina Easter Egg, specifically on Solo, but you can apply all of this logic into a cooperative game as well. Starting us off, after you land, you're going to be running rounds 1 through 6 uh, in this starting area, just killing zombies. The only thing you're going to want to worry about is looking for some form of explosive for later on, like a grenade, C4, a Semtex, anything works. Uh, but get to the very end of round 6, leaving one or two zombies, because we got quite a lot we're going to get done on round 6. With a few zombies remaining following my pathing, we're going to be opening doors and heading to turn on the power now. So, breaking the debris, uh, I usually stop by all the perk machines that I pass just to get the free 100 points for going down to prone in front of them. And as we pass this plane to our right, we're actually going to shoot a box underneath it to open it up, um, just so we don't have to worry about RNG later on and just pop it open while we're here. Continuing to follow my path, we're going to uh, again go prone on Jug, opening up the debris here and just keep opening doors all the way to the, uh, the power room. Now that we're at the power room, we're going to interact with that center console and go to our left and to our right, turning on each of these terminals, and that'll activate a, uh, a Dark Aether orb to spawn where Pack-a-Punch usually sits. After we uh, hold down the interact button with the orb, we're going to run back up the stairs to the spawn room to see where it wants us to go. Basically, it's going to make a point on your map of where you're going to want to head and go down and descend into uh, the bottom area to grab a part for Pack-a-Punch. But on the way there, we're going to be shooting up these uh, purple crystals in case they give us uh, some free armor, some free ammo, uh, free equipment, because I, I like the grenades, but I want to get rid of them for Semtaxes, so I shoot them on the way there just in case. Interacting with the portal will make you descend into the bottom area. You're going to want to interact with the Pack-a-Punch piece in that room, and then take it up to where you had the orb in the first place so you can fix the Pack-a-Punch machine. After interacting with the Pack-a-Punch machine, we're going to go back to the spawn room to check for the three possible spawn locations of the, uh, the Dark Aether orb. One is in that room that we just passed, the other one is going to be above Nocturne Toten in the little hut area on the very, very top, and the other one is going to be in the, uh, the swampy, lakey area by Quick Revive. Once we interact with the orb, we have a timed sequence of where we need to locate three ether tool parts, and every time we locate and grab one, it's going to spawn in a bunch of plague hounds. We're actually going to run through all three of the locations right now, as the three locations we hit are the only three locations for the part. They can spawn in, in uh, at random, though. So the first part's going to be on top of this plane, um, the second part's going to be down in the spawn area, it's a little wrench, and the third part location is going to be on top of a teleporter down by the Pack-a-Punch room, so you'll see those spawn locations now. Once all three of the parts have been captured, you'll start to come out of the Dark Aether. Usually I equip some armor because you will still have the dogs to deal with. You're going to want to lead them away, and then we're going to take them to the same room with the Deadshot Daiquiri machine, as there's going to be a cylinder you need to fill with uh, the Plague Hound gases, and it'd be very beneficial to get this done early on. So you're going to lure them over there. Usually I pop a ring of fire or throw a stun down or something to kill a bunch of them. Uh, it sucks up their gases, and then you'll have that step of the egg done already. And no, I will not be taking questions at this time as to why I almost let a pack of plague hounds down me on round 6. But we are going to take these parts over to the crafting bench now to craft our ether tool and uh, wait for the next step of the easter egg, which we're going to be interacting with a portal up at the speed cola room 
and that'll take us to our next location uh, of stuff we need to get done. You see me waiting in this room, the first thing we need to grab is going to be on that desk right there. You're going to grab that, and you're going to hurdle over this barrier, going to three uh, little spectral ghosts. Make sure to interact with them twice. I actually only interacted with him once and was confused as to why the step was not progressing. You need to interact with each of the ghosts twice, um, and I'll show you all three of the spawn locations. But while we're also in this little dark ether world, we're going to try to get a step done for the ice upgrade. So I'm going to come back with some commentary once that step is ready to go. Essentially what we're going to be doing now while we're waiting for the Dark Aether to exit is we're actually going to prolong our time here by interacting with this extra wisp that's not really needed for the egg. That just prolongs your amount of time in the Dark Aether. We're going to be uh, blowing up this barrier here and waiting around this tree. One of the steps for the ice upgrade is seeing this uh, little moss clump on that tree right there. It needs to be shot by one of the megatons, but now that we've progressed the easter egg enough, now that the red megatons are going to start spawning him. We're also going to grab this part that we shot earlier from the box now that the airplane is lifted. We, you can do it at any time, I just chose to do it now since I'm waiting for the megaton to spawn in anyways. And you're just going to stand by this tree, yep there he is, let him shoot the tree, and then if the moss is glowing purple then you did it right, you're good to go. Making our way back to the computer, we need to interact with it once again to progress the easter egg, and then we can start on building all four of the elemental upgrades. However, if you're looking for some free loot and a free uh, Juggernog, you can come over here and shoot these uh, blue orbs that I'm pointing at right now, and then it'll be rewarded with a free Jug and potentially even a Wonder Weapon. Uh, if not, you get some a bunch of free salvage and some wonderful goodies. I'm going to skip ahead to when we get the rewards from the thing. Uh, it does take you to the Dark Aether for your rewards. Um, the only thing that I do in the Dark Aether is I buy Stamina Up as perks start at 2500 and they go up 500 for each perk you have. And if we're getting Jug for free, I might as well get Stamina Up for 2500 instead of 3000 But yes, coming back from the Dark Aether, um, your chest is going to be in the center. Usually I have a dog round, so I will kill the, uh, the dogs present. And now it is round 7. So I'm going to kill the dogs on round 7, I'm going to open the chest to get the free Juggernog, and hope that we get a Megaton spawning in in the spawn area. The next step you have for building the DIE Wonder Weapon is going to be uh, achieving a card from him after you beat the Megaton the first time. Then I'll get you there here in a second. Essentially, you're going to take this key card down to the Deadshot Daiquiri room, uh, insert it for another part, and then come back to the spawn room and uh, train up your zombies and wait to run them through a trap. Keyword though, the trap doesn't uh, kill every single zombie that runs through it, so you need to be very on edge of which zombies are passing through the trap or not, but with a full horde of zombies in round 8, you should clear it just fine. When the text uh, is telling you that it's ready to fire, you're just going to want to finish off whatever zombies are left, leaving a few so you can get some more steps done. We're going to grab the Wonder Weapon from that room, and we're going to fire one shot into a box directly upstairs. I'll show you where it is. That's going to be for the ice upgrade. And then we're going to suck up the canister for the gas upgrade. Again, I'll be showing you guys where they are.
When you come outside, you're gonna pick up the beaker and place it for the ice upgrade. To your right was the uh, the fire upgrade portal. We're just gonna head downstairs and get the gas chamber, placing it on its appropriate box and then mailing it real quick so that it, uh, it can get started on the gas upgrade. Uh, and then we are going to start on upgrading the lightning variant. Um, it is a timed endeavor, but if you've got stamina up and some extra points laying around, you can really use the teleporters to get around the map a lot quicker. Uh, well, I'll be showing you my full pathing for the lightning upgrade here in just a moment. Interacting with the portal, we'll start the sequence. I'm just gonna wait right here uh, as there's gonna be a teleporter by my feet. We're gonna go to the Nocturne on Toten building first and then back, shoot the box. Then we're gonna go to the lakes area, back, shoot the box. And then right before we come down into this Undercroft area, back and shoot the box. I am gonna speed it up, but you can follow along with my exact pathing so you can get it done in one cycle. After shooting the final box, we are going to be teleported out of the Dark Aether, but before we do that, I am going to uh, just run up really quick to check on the beaker as it's needed for the ice upgrade. Beaker appears to be ready to go, so we'll pick it up and then we'll start the teleportation for the fire upgrade. All we need to go to do is to go down to the uh, the Deadshot Daiquiri area and then place one item. And then after that, the fire one is done. On our way up from the fire upgrade, we can place the uh, ice beaker onto its version and we can start shooting that area in speed cola with all four of the upgrades. Once we finish the final upgrade being shot into the canister, we can use this portal. Uh, and then we're just going to be standing in this spot up here waiting for the Dark Aether Wrench. Uh, there is some dialogue going on, and while the dialogue is going on, if you're standing next to the wrench, the zombies will not harm you. Coming back to grab the Dark Aether Wrench, and then we're going to head up to the spawn room uh, so we can tap on a tank three times and then use our explosives to shoot the tank. Once we tap on the tank three times, as mentioned earlier, a zombie will come out from the top, just kill the zombie, 
Uh, throw priorly a Sentex, but any form of explosive is good. Throw that on the tank, however this can kill the zombie, so be careful of that. Next you're going to run up past the stamina up entrance to the building and pick up a little gold orb thing. Once you pick it up, they're going to spawn in a bunch of dogs, and fun fact, if you have stamina up during this step, you, uh, you'll you be walking pretty slow, but if you have stamina up, you can actually turn around and use the mini-map to guide you, and you'll be moving faster than you will be moving forward. You're going to take this uh, tank to the spot that you got the wrench from. After you place the device, it's essentially going to be running rounds and getting yourself as upgraded as possible for the boss fight, as the next step is waiting on a Megaton to spawn in. And sometimes they spawn in on the very next round, and sometimes it takes several. So just be patient, kill zombies, maximize your points that you're gaining from them, and once the Megaton spawns, we'll lead him back down to that area. Now with our Megaton down here, we need to kill him to get him to split, and then we need to leave both of Lita, both of his halves into that circle on the floor right below the canister that you shot earlier with the die upgrades. Um, so basically I just dance around, running around the zombies for a little bit, and then if I get close enough to them, maybe they'll lunge at me, and then usually that will engage for them to go up into the canister. After you've gotten both of them to go up into the canister, you're going to go interact with the computer that we interacted with earlier, and that's going to prompt a uh, inskip unescapable cutscene. There have been ways in the past that people have gotten out of this room, but as uh, of the last time that I tested this, if you're able to escape the room, it does break the easter egg and it won't proceed. It used to work, but I don't think it works anymore. So you'll be waiting into this room until he's able to break free, and then you're just going to run back to the spawn room and do any sort of last minute preparations that you need to do. One preparation is going to be interacting with this Dark Aether Orb in the uh, first floor of the Nocturne Toten building. That is going to engage a cutscene. You're just going to have to pick up one thing off the table, and you can either sit there and listen to the dialogue while the zombies ignore you with this little spectral guy, or you can use this time to get ready for the boss fight. With uh, this time in which Mule Kick was added to the game, I like the way that it gives you ammo back for zombies that you kill, but it's not ingrained as a machine, so you can only get it through the Dark Aether. And with the Wonderfizz only spawning in, I believe it's 10 rounds after power, with us being around 12, we don't have the amount of time. But if you're in the Dark Aether, the Wonderfizz will spawn in. So I go there, I get Mule Kick, I make sure I have Stim Shots just in case, I got my Sentry Gun, and then we'll be ready to go for the boss fights. You're just going to wait out the Dark Aether, and then once you're back, the next time you interact with that photo in the corner that you interacted with earlier, it'll spawn you into the boss fight, and there is no going back from that time on. Once you've made it to the boss fight arena, you do again have more unskippable dialogue with Orlov. If you need to pack a punch, get an ulterior ammo upgrade, uh, now is a good time for that. Essentially, my boss fight strat is you're going to be protecting Orlov. While he cannot die, every time he takes damage, it slows him down in his progress bar. So you're going to be utilizing the Electro Bolt variant, uh, upgraded if you can, and upgrading um, and utilizing. Uh, ring of fire as much as you can on the first and the third phase of this boss fight I'll be utilizing ring of fire around him and then spraying with the electro bolt his second phase I'll use a sentry gun and try to preserve using the electro bolt as much as possible and if I need to I'll buy ammo before the third phase. So I'm going to leave the full boss fight in here. I am going to speed it up so this video isn't a mile long, but I will leave the full boss fight in here so you can see uh, all my trials and errors and everything that I did to come out on top of the boss fight. So I'll see you here in a second.
Once you see that flash of light, that means you have beaten the boss fight, but you have one more step left. So you're going to head over to where the armor stand is. Usually I upgrade my armor to tier 3 if I haven't already, and you're going to use this door on the way out. Essentially, you just have to ignore the bolts of light on the ground, so hold out your electric bolt to kill any zombies in front of you, and jump around in my pathing that I use and avoid zombies and avoid the lightning bolts. They will down you immediately. Again, I'm going to leave my full pathing in here. Uh, I'm going to speed it up a little bit, but I'm going to leave the full thing in here. Essentially, you're just running to the helicopter, and you're going to stay there until the helicopter can pick you up. And once it picks you up for next fill, you have beaten D, D Machina. And with that, you approach the helicopter, you board, and then you can just enjoy the cutscene as you're carried away, knowing that you have finally beaten the Easter egg for D Machina. Today, we're going to be walking you through the Firebase Z Easter egg. This video is the sequel to a series that we started by doing the D Machina Easter egg a couple weeks back. We did that video without expecting it to have any form of viewership counts, and the viewership figures did indeed blow our expectations out of the water. So today we present to you the sequel to the series, and we'll see how it goes, and if we're going to keep on doing these easter egg type videos. For the first round, you're just going to be killing zombies in this spawn area, and then you're taking that first door up to the teleporter to make yourself to the actual fire base, and I'm going to speed it up for you here in just a moment. Arriving at the fire base, you're essentially just going to be killing zombies in this main hub area, uh, saving up points to turn on the ether reactors. There are going to be three ether reactors around the map, each of them containing a perk, so there's one by Stamina, one by Speed Cola, and one by Juggernaut. Once you've activated all the ether reactors and killed zombies next to them uh, via the way the Garad Krovi used to work, then you're going to come back to the main hub area with Ravenov. I'm actually just going to speed it up until we do the first one, so you can get that one in the full view, and then I'm going to speed up the rest of the two. So I'll see you here in a minute. As mentioned earlier, after you activate the reactor, you see a charge and a damage meter. The charge bar is going to fill by zombies dying in this area, and the damage meter, it means that the zombies are doing damage to the reactors. At this low of a round, you probably won't have to worry about the damage figures, as it's going to go by so quickly, and you'll take so little zombies to activate the reactors. Uh, basically, the zombies are going to come in, you're just going to melee them to maximize your damage, and then once the charge is at full, There'll be a little, like, explosion. After that, we're going to pick up a shovel on the outside, and then we're just going to make our way to the next reactor. With that implosion, it's going to signal that it is done. We're just going to head outside. You can hop up here if you'd like. Go to this first little hut area, and on your right-hand side, there's going to be a shovel. We're going to use that later on when we're digging up the ether crystals later on the Easter egg. And then, as I mentioned earlier, you're just going to start heading around the map to the rest of the ether crystals. I'm just going to speed up the rest of this segment um, quite a bit, because it's the exact same thing as the first sequence. You just turn on the reactors and kill zombies. And if you want, you can go prone in front of the perk machines as well to get some extra points. But yeah, I'm going to speed it up real quick until we get done with the third one. As mentioned earlier, once we're done with the third ether reactor, you're going to follow my uh, my pathing here for the fastest route. You're just going to head back to the teleporter and go back and talk to Ravanov.
my pathing here is a bit excessive as I was contemplating what I'm gonna do next, not from an e-strike standpoint, but from a uh, awareness standpoint of getting prepared. But the next step here is going to be going back to our first reactor room, room with stamina, and we're gonna be going to go talk to Peck. It's a little excessive at the beginning of the Easter egg. It's kind of like dialogue missions from ESO. It's just kind of talking to Rabinon, talking to Peck, talking to Rabinon, talking to Peck. <laughs> Back and forth. But yes, we're going to go talk to Peck right now. Like I mentioned earlier, after you talk to Peck, the next step is going to be talking to Rabinon. However, if you wanted to, you could do a couple of steps right now for building the Reike. The Ray K is the one up into the map, it's like an AK-47 mixed with a ray gun, and you need it for a few steps as well as it makes the boss fight quite easier. You can earn it through a couple ways, like doing trials or getting it through the mystery box, but the most consistent route, and the route that I take on all zombies maps that I do, because I think doing all the side easter eggs is fun, is building it. So the first step is going to be grabbing the blueprints you find right there, and then you're going to head out to the dunesy area, and you're going to extract the key, so to speak. You'll you'll see what I mean here in a minute. John, I don't know where the community guideline stands on this, so let's just cut it out here. Once you received the key and the zombie was dealt with during that cutscene, you're just gonna head back to the uh, little armor stand room after the second reactor. It's on this little side pathing area if you follow my directions here. If you activate or interact with the computer with your newly acquired key, it'll then uh, prompt you to get a set of keys for some lockers. Opening the lockers will prompt uh, mimics to spawn in, and after killing one of the RNG-related mimics, it'll drop you, I believe, the barrel for the Ray K. You'll see what I mean here in just a moment. Once you kill the lucky mimic that gives you the barrel, rifle, whatever for the Ray K, then you're going to go back and talk to Ravanov. At this point in time, if you talk with Ravanov and you stay within that area, the zombies will avoid you, so you can use this as an opportunity to do the bunny easter egg for this map. It's similar to the, the disco or the coffin easter egg from D-Machina, but there's a couple of extra steps attached to it, so I'll come back here in a minute. So essentially, after you talk to Ravenov, the zombies will avoid you, then you're just gonna head up the stairs, ADS, and stare at the bunny. You're gonna stare at it excessively long for a little bit until it flies at you and teleports you to a little pocket dimension where you have a chance to get some extra loot and salvage, as well as a free Juggernaut reward. Once teleported into the pocket dimension, you need to run at the ether bunnies and shoot the crap out of them until they vanish. This will happen three times, then on the third successive one, all the zombies and the mimics will despawn, and then you just have to locate the loot chest and grab your rewards. I always make sure I look to the right of the chest when I open it, because that's always where Juggernaut falls, and this is a timed event. So I want to make sure that I'm able to get my free perk at least. Once teleported back out of the Dark Aether, you're going to head over and talk to Ravanov. He's going to give you the key card or a badge. The round may have flipped while you were gone, depending on how many zombies are left in the round. Essentially, you're just going to slide the key card on all these cabinets and grab one of the materials that they're going to mix for the Truth Serum. There are three locations for this. The first one, you notice, was right there. The second one is going to be in the, uh, the left side of the room there. And the third one is going to be down the hallway. You just follow my pathing path and you'll get there. Okay. Once you have all three of the compounds, you need to mix them all together. So following my path thing, you're going to go mix them. Uh, once you start the initial mixing process, it's going to spawn in a couple of fiery hellhounds. 
Once they're all dispatched, you can finish the mixing process and grab the machine. Once you grab the machine, you need to hook it up to the air duct or the little AC or whatever, the ventilation system above Peck's office. And then that will uh, send the truth serum into Peck. And it'll have some dialogue that he needs to go through before you're able to interact with him again. Once you interact with Peck after he's done talking about Martha and dancing around in the purple mist, uh, you can then head over to the data center to collect the Pokeballs, I mean the capture device for Firebase Z, um, and then you'll be able to start gathering your mimics. This is easily the most annoying easter egg step amongst every single easter egg on Black Ops Cold War. Essentially, you need to capture three specific mimics from three areas of the maps. There's one in this area we're passing by right now, one in the spawn, and one outside of the Juggernaut reactor. However, this is not consistent. Sometimes you will gather mimics from these specific areas, and it will be the wrong mimics. Basically, you need to capture them in the Pokeball by weakening them enough to throw the Pokeball down, and then you take it back to the data center, and if it's one of the three specific names, I believe it's like Sokolov, uh, Zabin, and Brahms, or Sokolov, someone in Brahms, uh, then you will be able to collect them. Uh, but sometimes it doesn't always happen that way, so yeah, have fun with that. Another step you could be doing right now is the dartboard step. Interacting with this uh, computer guy where we got the key from is going to tell you where to shoot on the dartboard in the spawn room. So you see the lower right white, the lower or upper right black, and then the lower right white. And you're going to go back to the spawn room and then shoot the dartboard with those three consecutive spots on the dartboard and then hit a bullseye. There is going to be a magnum pistol outside of the spawn room that is wonderful for this. You can throw a blueprint on it with a scope and make yourself super accurate. By shooting those three spots and then the bullseye, it'll open it up to reveal a Ray K piece. Now with all of our Ray K pieces that we can collect until we interact with a mangler for the first time, we can head back to the data center to begin the very, very annoying Mimic Pokeball step. Unlocking this cabinet will allow you to grab the Pokeballs and begin the most annoying Easter egg step in all of Cold War Zombies. Essentially, you're going to be running through these three areas. This is the first one. If you notice any salvage, kill streaks, or anything on the ground, that is your indicator that the Mimic is in this spawn location. The next spot, if you run through this hallway here, it could be anywhere from the right here onwards to the staircase. It could also be up the staircase to your right or to your left. If it's not, it could be down this hallway or out on the outside to your right, or it could be in the spawn room next uh, above where Ravenov's office is. As mentioned earlier, you're just going to weaken the Mimic enough, uh, you're going to throw down the Pokeball and capture him into it. You can also shoot the Mimic while he's going into the Pokeball if he's not quite weak enough. You just want to make him as weak as you can without actually killing the Mimic, and then you can pick up the Pokeball and take it back to the Transfer Center. Once you have all three uh, names successfully inputted into the, uh, the trap here, then you will be able to proceed with the next step. As you can see, Markin is actually an incorrect name. I need, uh, I believe Sokolov, Zabin, or Brahms are the correct names. So once you do that for three mimics and get all three correct names, the next step can be proceeded with a floppy disk at that machine that you need to grab. Once you grab the floppy disk, you're going to take it over to the uh, a machine that is in the room across from where you go to talk to Peck. Um, so I'll meet you there here in a second. Once inserted, you're going to need a way to power the anomaly in the center there. So you're going to go back and talk to Peck, and he's going to tell you that you need to get Ether Crystals. After that, there's going to be some dialogue with Rabinov, who's going to tell you the codes for a locker near Peck. After that, you're going to get the Ether Meter, and you're going to start your quest to get the three uh, Ether Crystals to power the anomaly. I'll meet you there here in just a second. Once you've grabbed your Ether Meter, the first of the trials we're going to commit to is deciphering uh, which crystal is the Mimic and which one isn't. 
What I mean by that is you're going to go to this spot right over here. You're going to dig up a crystal. And then a bunch of mimics of this crystal are going to spawn around. If you check inside of them, you see some have black uh, foggy mist surrounding them. You want to find the beaker that has no black foggy mist. So floating around it is just white. There isn't a single ounce of black. Once you find that, you're going to pick it up. It's actually right here. You see no black foggy mist. Once you pick it up, you're good to go. If you pick up the wrong one, you're going to fail the step. Your next step is going to be a defense step, but to make sure the zombie survives, you're actually able to trap him within the Pokeballs that we used for the Mimic step. If you just hold on to that Magnum that you kept earlier on, you're just going to shoot him until he's weak enough and then trap him within the Pokeball. Then you're going to dig up the Yellow Crystal, which is going to initiate a defense step, which you're just going to run around, avoiding the Hellhounds killing them as much as you can. And it's going to spawn in two Manglers. On the first Mangler, make sure you shoot off his wrist cannon. That is going to drop the uh, the energy cell that you need for the Ray K. After you're done with that and you've collected it, just make sure you're killing all the dogs and the Manglers that spawn in. And once the defense step is done, you'll be able to retrieve that yellow crystal in the center. Once you've retrieved the uh, second crystal there, the third crystal does need the Ray K to complete. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop off the energy cell at that crafting bench in the same room with the armor stand. We're actually heading there right now. The energy cell needs two rounds to charge, and it doesn't mean full rounds. So if we drop this off at 14 on round 16, you can pick up the battery and then fully build your Ray K. So I'll see you here in two rounds. And again, what's nice as is, is, uh, dropping the battery off in round 14 at the very end is we pretty much only had to flip a single round. Round 16 is beginning right now, so we're going to run over, grab our battery, and then head to the crafting table that is right next to us and build ourselves the Ray K. Then we're pretty much going to be boss fight ready outside of the crystal step, which we're going to head up these stairs right now. The Ray K has two modes. If you toggle on to its second mode, I believe it's up on the D-pad, and then shoot it on the ground in this corner... Then you're going to retrieve the crystal and then grab it. If you don't have the Ray K shot going, the crystal will actually always run away from you. Now we're just going to be getting the rest of the way boss fight ready. The only things I would recommend is getting the Ray K at least to tier 2 Pack-a-Punch, having a Speed Cola for the fast reload, Deadshot Daiquiri for its, pre its accuracy damage, its precision, I'm not sure exactly, critical hit kill, there we go, critical hit damage, uh, as well as either monkey bombs or the um, the black hole grenade. I forget what it's called. It's like the, the Casimir or something. It was from Ascension in Black Ops 1, but they changed the name in this game. Essentially, you're going to get all those things, and then once you're completed there, we're going to drop off each of those crystals into each of the ether reactors that we started at the beginning of the game. So I'll see you there in just a couple minutes. Now, once you've dropped off all of the uh, crystals into each of the ether reactors, if you go back to the center anomaly, you're going to notice that there's a little bubble there. After a couple of moments, it's going to tell you that the breach has been, like, unstable and it blows up or whatever. Essentially, your next step from here moving forward is to use a control panel to redirect a satellite laser to fuel the station. Once you're activating, I'm going to show you the panel here in a second, but once you activate the panel, it's going to show you a couple of spots on the map. Using your uh, D-pad, you're going to direct the cursor onto each of them. It's going to pull up a bunch of different country flags. You're going to hover over the flag that is a question mark and interact with it. Essentially, that's going to trigger the laser, and from here on forward, you are boss fight golden. After that, you're just going to go back to the anomaly site, interact with one more thing, and then you're going into the boss fight. But I'm going to show you the panel here in just a moment. Here is the panel, and as you can see, it's going to be very, very slow when you're moving it around. And you can only use your D-pad, so you can only move in the four directions. But I'm going to hover over each of the thing, and in the lower right-hand corner, you're going to notice a different flag appears on screen. I'm looking for a white or gray background with a black question mark. That is the flag that we're going for here. And for us, this game, it's going to be in the upper left-hand corner. As you see, there's the question mark. You hit Acknowledge. And then from there, moving forward, the game takes care of the rest when it comes to the laser. The only thing you have to do is go up to this anomaly up the stairs and wait to be able to interact with this panel on the right-hand side. 
Once you interact with the OPC, you're going to get the cutscene of Maxis coming out of the portal. A few things for this boss fight. It is the Orda boss fight. So essentially what you're going to do is move in front of the car to your left looking at Orda. You're then going to start firing your Ray K as much as you can without activating Ring of Fire. Once you drop below 10, 7, 5 rounds left in the Ray K, you're going to activate Ring of Fire, still shooting the Orda and trying to hit as many critical hits as humanly possible. Once you think the Ring of Fire is about to run out, you're going to throw either your uh, Casimir or your Monkey Bombs out in front of you to help keep the zombies off of you while you reload and finish off the rest of Orda's health. It's a pretty straightforward and quick boss fight. Uh, probably one of the easiest boss fights in Cold War in my opinion. But if you have the strategy down, you can just completely tear through this boss fight. But I am going to show it in its entirety here in a second as it's pretty quick. So I'll see you guys here in a second once the cutscene is over. Spawning into the boss fight, again, moving to the left of the car and shooting Orda as much as we can with our twice upgraded Ray K. Next, when we drop below our 10 rounds, we're going to activate Ring of Fire, still shooting that orange glowing spot in the center to get that mass critical damage with the Deadshot Daiquiri mixed with the Ring of Fire and the Ray K. Shooting zombies if they come over to touch us, mostly just targeting Orda. Now I feel like we're getting pretty low on its Ring of Fire's charge, so I'm going to throw a Casimir in front of me while still shooting the Ray K, so I'll make it reload without having to tap square. It's going to reload by itself. Then we're going to get the rest of the damage done on Orda, and with that, you have beaten the Firebase Z Easter Egg. Outbreak 1 Easter Egg. This egg is actually quite complicated, so I'm going to be breaking it down with as little cuts as possible, and mostly just full-length gameplay and talking over it as much as humanly possible. But if you're looking for a good loadout, the loadout that I'm using in this video is the Amp 63 with Ether Shroud. I'm actually going to put that loadout on screen right now. The agency suppressor for the bit muzzle, the task force barrel, the uh, 5 milliwatt laser body, we have the fast mags, and then the dual wields to get as much damage output as possible. But the actual first step of the easter egg is just doing every side easter egg, all the looting, everything you can possibly do to get us prepped for this easter egg and the boss fight as humanly possible getting your way to round three. And I mean every side easter egg. For the boss fight, I actually recommend getting full orange rarity weapons, triple pack-a-punch, self-revives, equipment, kill streaks, the whole works. It's pretty tough. Uh, but yeah, you're just going to be going all the way through the rounds, doing every single side easter egg possible, getting all the way to round three. There will not be a single step of the easter egg until round three. On round three, we are going to be looking for a signal and a signal booster. Um, essentially, you're going to find the signal, it's going to call in a bunch of zombies, you're going to see what frequency is at, and then you're going to find three signal boosters, changing them to that same frequency and killing zombies if need be. I'm actually going to put all the uh, locations for all the maps on screen for you right now. The signals indicated in red and the amplifiers are signaled in the green dots. So you can see them all across the maps in Outbreak updated as of 2022. As I mentioned earlier, you're going to listen to the signal, see which frequency it says it's going to be at. Usually it's going to give you a bunch of zombies spawning in right off the gate, so anytime you see feedback, it's going to be spawning in a bunch of zombies. And after you kill the zombies, the feedback section will end, and then you're going to be able to see which frequency you uh, need to set the other receivers at. So I'll see you here in a moment. So there you can see after we kill the rest of the zombies, we are now at active static 4, so we need to set the three receivers to active static 4. Anytime you see the feedback thing, it's going to spawn in a bunch of zombies, but sometimes you'll get it so it doesn't. But you're just going to keep uh, interacting with it until it gets to the static noise that you require it to be. So there's one, two, three, and four. So that one is done. That one was actually pretty nice to us. Usually you'll get them at least doing feedback once, um, but yeah, you just go around those areas, those dots that I showed you guys earlier, setting it, there's feedback again, setting it to uh, the same static as the first receiver, and then you'll go back to the, the uh, first receiver to get a, uh, a part for later on.
Once you return to the first receiver, you're just going to interact with it. It's going to spawn you in a bunch of free points and then a part. Then you're just going to run through the rest of this world tier and then go back and interact with the beacon. Now you're going to have a brand new option at the beacon. It's that phone option there. After a little bit of dialogue with Maxis, you'll teleport to world tier 4 for the next steps of the easter egg. Now at world tier 4, you're going to be looking for monkeys. I'm actually going to put all the monkey spawns for all the maps on screen. There are four monkey spawns per map, and you're going to be looking for a silver monkey. I'm actually going to show it on screen here after I'm done showing you guys the map layouts. Um, all the monkeys are going to be silver, and they're going to be propped up in different locations. They're little statues. And once you shoot them, it's going to drop an item. However, if the monkey has an M next to the name, that is the monkey you're actually going to want to shoot. So I'm going to show you one monkey, no M. If I shoot it, just drop some ammo. This next monkey is going to have an M, as you can see on screen. If I shoot it, it's going to drop a part for later on. Now, once you grab the parts, or the little film, you're going to find a, uh, a little teleprompter room to display that part onto. I'm actually going to show all the, the, the projectors, sorry. I'm going to show the projectors locations on all the maps on screen right now. You're just going to go to that location, put it on the projector, go through the dialogue as earlier with the Maxis uh, telephone option, and then once that's completed, you can go to World Tier 5. I'll see you guys here in a minute. Now in the teleprompter room for this map, once we interact with the slides, it's going to put up on screen right there. And then, like I mentioned earlier, you're just going to have a little bit of dialogue to cut through. I'm actually going to speed it up, and then you can jump to World Tier 5. Spawning in World Tier 5, this is your last chance to get boss fight ready as the objective switches to the actual objectives. You want to make sure you're perked up. Make sure you got an orange rarity gun, triple pack a punch, death machine, ether shroud, the armor, the works. You want to be prepared. Because once you enter this elevator right here with the diamond with your full team and you acknowledge with it, it's sending you down into the bunker and into the boss fight. The bunker section, the whole point of it is going to get three keys to interact with the launch sequence and send you up to the surface for the boss fight. Um, you're actually going to follow my path thing. I'm not going to trim it up much. It's not a perfect bunker section as I do take a lot of wrong turns, but I'm going to leave most of it in here just so you can see my decision making process and to see the, uh, the order in which I go about doing things or how I can shortcut certain aspects of the bunker section. Again, not perfect by any means, but uh, I'm going to leave it all in here in its entirety. Same with the boss fight too, just so you can see, again, my decision making and how I play things out. Um, but with the bunker here, we're actually going to cut across. I actually make a wrong turn because I second guess myself. That is the correct room right here, but I second guess myself and I go back to the main room. But you're actually going to go down um, through that purple section there. You can see me running around the zombies here. Jumping down here, and then you're going to lift the lockdown. You're going to go to this diamond area here. Lifting the lockdown, and once that's completed, you're going to have a cutscene. Um, but if you're quick enough, you can actually zip over here and grab the Pokeball from the Firebase Z Easter egg. But after the cutscene, it's going to spawn you back in the same place every single time. I'm going to go down here and interact with the canister. I have stamp up so it didn't take fall damage. But I'm going to interact with this canister over here. Next, you're going to want to collect crystals to fuel the canister. It's similar to how the canister works in uh, Outbreak. Well, that's obviously wrong Outbreak, but Outbreak or the Mauer to Token Easter Egg. Uh, essentially, you're just going to fuel it, and then you're going to strap it to your back, and you're going to take it with you. You need at least one of the charges um, for a jellyfish later on, but we're actually going to use one of the charges to kill a bunch of mimics in the middle section here. You'll see me running around shooting crystals as much as I humanly can um, to fuel the canister. You need 20 to fuel the canister, and they do stack up through your whole team. Um, so once I grab a couple crystals, I'll go over and start refilling it. Holding down square will cause a couple of... Uh, shocky boys to come on in here uh killing them and just holding down square is gonna start loading the crystals in here but you're gonna keep doing this until it's fully completed and i'll come back in just a second once it's fully completed
once you have it fully completed and it's recharged enough to be able to grab it, you're gonna grab it and then just zip up to the top. You're actually gonna cut through the middle section because the middle section is gonna have a bunch of mimics. Don't run into the middle section until this section. Knock this out first. Because once you run in here, there's a bunch of items that were not here previously. That's because they're all mimics. Uh, running past them will spawn in all the mimics, and then you can use one of your charges from the canister to actually damage all of them. I actually forgot that there are three charges on this canister instead of two, so instead of using my second charge like I should have, I just decided to shoot all of them. But, uh, even if you're like me and you forget to look at the number in your lower right hand corner, it'll still do a bunch of damage for three of these mimics. Realistically, I could have done one charge, shoot a bunch of them, re-lap them around, and then use a second charge and still have a free third charge for the jellyfish later on, but that was a bit silly here, I was a bit silly. But yeah, you're just going to shoot all these mimics here, and then a, a boss mimic is actually going to be at the end of the hallway, once you interact with the uh, dead body right at the end of the hallway, over here, nope, over here, there it is. Once you interact with that, a boss mimic will spawn in, killing the mimic will actually allow you to get uh, your first key. We are back, the Mimic is dead, and we're going to pick up our first key. Next, we're going to cut across here, back to uh, where we start. I think I got a little twisted up, but the next one that we're going to knock out is going to be the Monkey. We got a Pokeball from earlier. You'll notice if you look up on some of the walls in this section here that some of the vents are going to glow blue. That means the Monkey is in the vents. He took the key, supposedly. That right there. If you get too close to the wall, the Monkey will scare off and run away. So if you throw it from about that range, and then you just wait until the uh, the dialogue options on your screen will tell you that he's in range. You'll just double tap square to catch a nip trap target in range. Double tap square to catch the monkey. And then if you interact with the trap, you'll be able to get the key from it. And that is your second key down. Third and final key is going to be the first thing that you started once you spawned in from the cutscene. It's going to be the jellyfish that we spoke of earlier. Taking the canister that you still have on your back next to the jellyfish on this staircase right here, Using the charge on this little blue moss, then the jellyfish will start to pick you up. If you start to look down at your feet and keep interacting with it by, you know, holding down square, letting go square, holding down square, etc. Just to make sure you don't miss it. Eventually, you'll be able to interact with a canister floating within the jellyfish and you'll be able to get the key from the jellyfish. After that, he's going to put you back on the ground and you're going to be able to start the, uh, the launch sequence. Using your three keys, you're going to interact with a little computer section in each of the three segments of the map, A, B, and D. Um, this section is random every single game that you go into, so it's trial and error. If you interact with A and it doesn't work, then you know A is not the starting sequence, or if you interact with A and then you go to B and it's not that, then you know it's A, D, B, etc. It's trial and error. Um, but you have a very limited window to do that, so once you interact with one, if you have a partner, you can have your partner interact with the second one, and then you interact with the third one. Once it gives you the acknowledgement that you did it correctly, then it is time to go up the stairs and get ready for the boss fight. So I'll see you here in a moment. There's the acknowledgement I was speaking about earlier. That is your A-OK -okay to get ready for the boss fight. It's going back into the middle section and up the stairs. Eventually, it'll give you a, an acknowledgement that you can open the door on the top and head out into the boss fight. The boss fight is actually pretty tricky, and it gives you a limited window to do it in. I think it's about eight minutes, and that, I think, is the trickiest part. Essentially, you're going to go up into the boss fight, and every time you break the armor of the Legion boss, then it's going to give you a small window of opportunity to shoot orbs around him. Make sure you're only shooting them one at a time, and I mean focus fire on the one orb at a time. So you'll see me break him, I'll find one orb, usually the one on the left, I'll go right underneath it with the ether shroud, and then just let loose on that poor orb. Um, you need every bullet you can get to pop these orbs, they have tons of health. So once you do the first orb, he'll come back in, you break him, do the second orb, he'll come back in, break him, the third orb will usually take you two tries, I've hardly ever gotten the third orb on the first try. Um, once you break him, third orb, he'll come back, break him, finish the third orb, and then you have finished the boss fight. I'm actually going to leave this entire boss fight unsped up in its entirety for you guys to watch my uh, trials, tribulations, my decision making, and everything. 
I'm not going to be talking anymore throughout this Easter egg until the very end of the boss fight. Again, this is by no means a perfect boss fight, but I'd like you guys to see my decision making and to see what things I do where. I do highly recommend using either the Amp 63 or the M16 for this boss fight. The Hower is good if you're good at getting really up close, but either way, maximizing your Ether Shrouds uh, is great. Entirely my strategy is just shooting the boss, and if I don't have an Ether Shroud charge, shooting zombies until I get it back. But I'll see you guys after the boss fight is over.
And as the final orb pops, you have beaten the Outbreak 1 Easter Egg. Today we're going to be walking you through Outbreak number 2's Easter Egg. And much like Outbreak number 1's, the first step of the Easter Egg is getting to round 3. You are going to want to complete all the side Easter Eggs just to get as prepared for the boss fight as humanly possible. Um, but we'll see you guys on round 3. Before we get to round 3, the loadout that I used for this video is an M16, and the loadout's going to be on screen here. Uh, when we do teleport to round 3, we go to Sanatorium, and on the time of recording this easter egg, I believe that you couldn't do the easter egg on Sanatorium, because I thought there was no red rifts uh, on that map. However, when researching the red rift locations for this video, I discovered you can indeed do it on Sanatorium, so I actually went to round 4. Uh, but here in a moment, I'm actually going to flip to the uh, all the locations for the red rifts, Essentially, you walk through the teleporter, and then you need to fall into three other variants of it to catch a part, so I'll show that here in just a moment. Like I said, you're going to go through this portal here, it's going to teleport you into the sky, and you need to teleport, or parachute, into the next Red Rifts without touching the ground. You only have one chance to do this, so if you fail it, you have to go to the next round to do it again. And you wouldn't want to do it rather quickly, it is timed, so after a little bit the portal will dissipate. Um, we're going through the first one here, next you're going to teleport back into the sky. I'm just going to speed the teleporting process up a little bit, it's, it takes a little bit of time. The second one's going to be a little bit farther away, and the third one is going to be the farthest away. It's going to be the hardest to see, so make sure you are going to be very um, with it, very visual looking for a bright red portal. Some maps are easier to spot than others, and I'm not sure if the spawn locations for the portals are the same every single time, um, but as you can see, it's pretty hard to see. It's all the way out there, so making sure you're finding it pretty quickly once you found it, making sure you're getting to it rather quickly so you can get to it before it disappears. And after you go through all three, it's going to teleport you back up into the sky, and it's going to drop a glowing gold part onto the ground. So it's actually going to send a little yellow beam into the sky so you can grab it. Uh, after that, you're just going to go continue through the round, finishing up all your side quests, and then going to the beacon. Uh, you're going to have another button just like we did for Outbreak 1, so I'll see you there in a moment. Just like in Outbreak 1, you're going to push the, the telephone button, that's going to get some dialogue options, and after that's said and done, you're going to teleport to Sanatorium. Next, uh, you're going to be stuck on Sanatorium for the rest of the Easter Egg, and first things first, we're going to travel to the lower left section of the map, I'm going to point it out here in just a moment. You're going to clear out some zombies and then interact with a radio and a helicopter, so I'll see you guys here in a minute. Once the dialogue is finished, when activating the radio with a helicopter, you're going to need to look for some red orbs. Here are the three spawn locations. Essentially, you're going to want to find the orb that is on your map, and then you're going to shoot it towards the bridge that I just pointed out on the map. So you're going to get next to it, you're going to shoot it in the direction of the bridge, and then follow it, and you're going to do this several times. It's kind of like following the ethereal orb around on regular Outbreak for that little side quest. Um, but in this sake, you're just going to shoot it in the direction of the bridge until it's hovering over a rover. It's, it's kind of like the uh, the escort rover with the monkey um, main quest step on some of the Outbreak maps. So once you get it over there, you're just going to want to run up to the uh, the rover, and then it's going to give you a couple of bits of dialogue, and then you're on to the next step, the Easter egg. So I'll see you here in a minute. Once that step is done, you're going to need to check all the mystery box spawn locations. Obviously, one is lit in the sky. It's not going to be that one, so you have two to check. This is not uh, the one you want, as it's a regular, non-existent mystery box. This is the correct one. It's more cracked, and it has a bunny on top of it. Interacting with the bunny is going to spawn in a bunch of zombies, and once you kill all the zombies, you can interact with the bunny. It's going to give you a little bit of loot, and then you're going to take the bunny to that same rover that we took the red orb to earlier. Uh, so I'll see you guys here in a moment.
putting the bunny in the or in the uh, little rover thing. They're gonna collide. You're gonna have a radio with some dialogue, and once the dialogue is finished up, you can start the escort step, which is very similar to the monkey escort step main quest in some of the outbreak maps. Um, it's gonna give you a little bubble that you can't escape from, similar to Forsaken, as you'll take damage outside of it and you need to protect the rover as best as humanly possible. After escorting it for a little bit and killing zombies, you'll be at the boss fight for Outbreak. The uh, boss fight for Outbreak 2 is essentially uh, just an exfil, um, but there is an order that you need to take out, and the order will constantly spawn in zombies, so you're going to want to prioritize order first. Just doing damage over time, Aether Shroud is going to be your friend, um, just doing your best. I'm actually going to leave the full boss fight in here, just like I did with Outbreak 1, so I'm not going to talk through a lot of it, but it's just going to be you know, running the zombies around, doing damage where you can as it is timed, but making sure you're playing it safe. If you're really, really worried about the time, you're going to get yourself killed. So just playing it safe, running around, taking shots when you can, using Aether Shroud, Killing zombies to get Aether Shroud back, Speed Cole is going to be your friend to get Aether Shroud back as consistently as possible, and just doing damage to Orda, because once Orda has fallen, killing the rest of the zombies is going to be so easy, but Orda is the big bad here, and he's going to keep spawning in zombies, so you want to prioritize Orda. I'm going to leave the full boss fight in here, and I'll talk to you guys once the boss fight's over.
And once the last zombie has fallen, you can board the helicopter and you've officially beaten Outbreak 2. Today, we continue our trek through the Cold War Easter eggs, and we'll be tackling the Mauer Deer Toten Easter egg. I did edit it very similarly to the past two videos, but I am trying out a new spin. So the very beginning of this video is going to have the sped up footage. So for those of you who don't know how to get to the power switch and pack a punch, you'll know the pathing. But after that, it's going to be mostly jump cuts to the various different uh, steps of the Easter egg. And at the very beginning of this video, I'm also going to detail all the steps of the Easter egg, and then we'll jump into the very first step. So I'm going to fast forward the footage until we get to the power switch, where we will find all the steps of the Easter egg and the start of the Easter egg. So I'll see you guys here in a moment. And now that we've made it through the time segment, we'll get into the steps. Uh, you'll see them on screen right now. They're going to be in segments of five, and you can read them on screen and pause as needed. After all these segments are done playing on screen, we're going to jump into the very first step of that, which is going to be turning on the power. So you're just going to be killing the Tempest that just spawned in the room with us. Um, so we'll see you here in just a moment. As I said earlier, to get the first fuse for the power, you're going to kill this Tempest and then grab the fuse on the floor. Next, you're going to kill a second Tempest in the underground area, and then you're going to hook them up to the power switch. I'm going to speed it up until you get there. Here is the second Tempest. You're going to grab the fuse, plug him into the machine, and turn on the power. Like I said earlier, I am going to be doing the speeding up segments and more explaining at the beginning of this video for new players. But then after this point and the pack punch point, it's going to be a lot of jump cuts with shorter explanations. So you guys let me know in the comment section below if you like this style more of tutorials or if you like the style better of my uh, D Machina and Firebase Z tutorials. But after we turn on the power, we're going to head up this rope. There's going to be sort of a ritual system. So once you interact with the Pack-a-Punch machine, it's going to start a ritual where a bunch of zombies are going to spawn in with a... I um, can't remember exactly what his name is. He's like a little Dementor guy up the top. Once you kill him, the main guy, it will cause a Riptide explosion and despawn the zombies. It's not going to end the round, but it's going to despawn them and they'll come back in over time. So as you see, I kill him, and that's going to end the ritual. Pack Punch is now going to be unlocked with a little explosion that you see there. 
that's just gonna despawn the zombies. And from here, you can take this opportunity to either dig up the holes here uh, for the satellite dish with later on the Easter egg, you can pack a punch, you can get some armor, or you can just train around the zombies waiting for you the next steps of the Easter egg. As suggested earlier, that's going to lead us to our next step. It's digging for the satellite dish. You're going to be digging up these potholes here until you're able to collect the gold satellite dish, which you see on screen right there. We need that for the Klaus upgrade later on the Easter egg. And while we're here, we can also train around the zombies, get some extra points so we can up, we can uh, blow up the debris leading to the second half of the map. We can upgrade our armor, or we can get brain rot for the next steps of the Easter egg. Next up, we're going to be buying the Brain Ross alternative ammo type, as we do need to turn a zombie to have him open this debris in the hotel section later on. You can see me zip lining up to that area. You're going to follow this pathing past the speed cola machine and then down the hallway. There's going to be a room at the end of the hallway that you can see into. There's a bunch of plywood blocking up the entrance. If you turn a zombie in this room, this is actually going to lead the zombie to break down the debris and he's gonna open up that room for you. So that takes us into step five, brain rotting a zombie. So in comes a couple of zombies, and then next one, bang. He is going to open up the door, allowing us to grab an item inside and to open up the room with the vault later on to get a free wonder weapon. So here you see us go in there. We're gonna take the hands from the bed zombie here, and that's gonna be one of our parts for the, uh, the Klaus build later on. Next, we're going to head over here to the right and place the satellite dish in the upgrade chamber. So we're going to use to upgrade Klaus later on in the Easter egg. And now, essentially, all we're doing now is running rounds until round 10. That is the first time the Panzer, or the Krasny Soldat, is going to spawn in. He has a piece for our Klaus upgrade. So once we defeat him, we will be able to grab that piece and build Klaus for the first time. The first time is going to be free once you build him, but every time after that is going to be 10,000, uh, not 10,000, 2,000 points, goodness sakes, 2,000 points to uh, spawn in Klaus every time after the first time. So once we grab the battery, we're going to take the zip down here. He is going to be in the corner right there, and since you grabbed the hands earlier, you're good to go. Then you can use Klaus to uh, open up a cabinet over here to the left. Just by using the L1 button, you can summon Klaus to a particular location, or if you have the uh, the marker right in front of the location, he might interact with it. Uh, that's what we're going to do with this locker. That's what we're going to have to do with a wall later on in the Easter egg there. So after we pick up the flashlight and have Klaus get zombie kills, he needs quite a few zombie kills um, to make sure he's able to go into the chamber earlier with the satellite dish. Uh, while we're having him kill zombies, we can have him punch this wall. This is going to expose a secret room that you'll have to shoot the wonder weapon at later on. But after that, again, you can continue to train zombies and have Klaus get as many kills as humanly possible. I think it's about 50 that he needs to be able to be upgraded in the chair with the satellite dish. Next, we're going to look for the codes for the free Cerberus weapon upgrade. On the wall, you can see the number, I think it was two or three. Uh, there are three different codes for the vaults, and that number is going to tell you which number is going to fall in the code order. And right there, you can find the code. By using the black light and searching the walls, you can find the, the code. So just write it down, memorize it, do what you got to do. And you're going to go to these three locations as I'm showing on screen, scanning the walls. Sometimes it can be a tad difficult. There are um, spawn locations for these specifically, so you can Google those if need be. I uh, don't remember them, so I just scan the walls up and down and I'm able to get the job done there. Once you got your three codes, you're going to enter them into the vault here in that secret room. The nice thing about this, and I think they learned from their mistakes during the Firebase Z dartboard step, is once you interact with the safe, you are actually good to go. The zombie is going to run away from you, and you're able to input the code as many times as you wish. As long as you're interacting with the safe, the zombie will leave you alone. 
It does take me a couple times, even though I do know the codes from looking at them on the wall. The, uh, the little dials are a little sensitive, and sometimes, even though you think you're completely correct, you, for some reason, are not. But once you get the code and you uh, click uh, square or circle, that's going to now enable you to grab the Cerberus Wonder Weapon. Next, you're going to take that and grab the headgear pieces by shooting these three areas of the map with the Cerberus. You're going to gather the headgear pieces for Klaus for a later Easter egg step. And I'm gonna have them on screen now. You're just gonna go over to them, shoot the things that I'm shooting with Cerberus, and grab your headgear pieces, and you are good to go for this Easter egg step. Next thing, you're gonna go over to Klaus and equip the headgear to him. That way, again, once next time you summon him, he can complete this step off uh, in his passive time. Next up, you're gonna get Wonder Weapon kills to get the Blue Beam upgrade. The Cerberus is special because it kind of acts like an arcade game where the more things you kill with it, it'll drop random upgrades uh, that you can just pick up like drops. One of the upgrades that you need to get is the blue beam upgrade, because that is going to be used to melt the wall that Klaus punched earlier. And there we go, you can see me melting the wall, you just shoot it a bunch, and then eventually the wall will rip away. Do not enter the room though, it will enter the round once you enter the room. Uh, next you're going to have Klaus get more zombies kills, and I have him do it in this room because that is the chair right there, so as soon as that little indicator turns green, you can signal for Klaus to go sit in the chair and it'll start an upgrade lockdown sequence. You do have to defend Klaus and the zombies do come in fierce. So having someone like uh, Speed Cola, uh, Ring of Fire, anything like that to allow you to shoot endlessly is going to be very beneficial in this situation. Once Klaus is upgraded, you're going to head into the secret room to end the round. This is going to start a dog round for Malware, which is those little red exploder guys. After that round is cleared, the little protective bubble is going to dissipate over these machines. You just have to shoot the one in the far corner with the Cerberus to open the door. You can grab the trap, and then you can grab all three of the beakers for this uh, next machine set. You can grab all three at a time, you just have to interact with it three times, and the zombies don't make it easy. But essentially this next step is you're going to have three glowing green boxes around the map and they spawn in different locations each game. You're basically just going to deposit your beaker, throw the trap to summon a couple of tempests, you're going to kill all of them within a close radius of the box, and then you're going to grab it. It's kind of like the outbreak step where you have to um, take the ether canister with you to a location so it has the little bursty uh, L1 R1 type specialist ability. Uh, you're just going to take the zip line and take it back to where you grabbed the canisters from earlier. You can follow my pathing to get there. Basically, it's going to spawn in a bunch of zombies, uh, manglers, the little red goos. You're just going to go back to this room, jump over the barricade, and then deposit it. And then you're just going to grab another trap, rinse and repeat around the map for the rest of the two green boxes. Alright, after you've done that, you're gonna have Klaus stop the train. Essentially, now that he's upgraded, if you have him sit on the railroad tracks across from Mule Kick, you flip that switch that I had you flip, he will stop the train. As you see, I have him on the same side as Mule Kick, and he is not going into a pose position. If you have him sit at this position after you've pulled the lever, then he will be able to stop the train. The train's gonna come in from straight ahead of you. He's gonna, the train's gonna be stopped by Klaus. You quickly have to run, see the cooling down, we've already pulled the lever. You're gonna have to quickly run onto the train and you're gonna grab one item and one key card. It's gonna be right centered here. On your right is the item and on your left is the key card. Just grab those and then run off the train and you're good to go for that step. You're just gonna place the item in that little beaker section area and it's gonna have you get the uranium from the mango, or the megaton, sorry. Interacting with this computer three, four times is going to enable the step. Basically, a bunch of uh, high-value targets are going to spawn in. Once you kill all of them, they will drop uranium. You're going to grab the uranium pieces, take them to a crafting table to build it, and attach it to two different sides of a zip line. You're going to watch me do it. I'm going to keep it in its entirety. I'm not going to speed ahead at all, so you guys can watch this. This is one of the more difficult steps of the Easter egg. On solo, you can have the time to attach each of the uranium pieces to the zipline, and on a co-op game or above, you do need to do it relatively around the same time as each other. 
But as I mentioned earlier, you're just going to be taking out the high value targets. I recommend killing the Mimics first, as the, the Megaton is what's going to spawn in your Uranium. It can get a bit dicey doing this, as you see I almost get caught up on the tank. It can get a little dicey doing this in the middle of a round. I do recommend saving a few zombies, as you might need to blast a few while you're running the Uranium, because you do actually take damage over time while holding the Uranium. But once you kill the red Megaton, he's going to split into the segments. Killing each of the segments will drop a piece of uranium, and you're going to do this pretty much the same thing for each piece, but on different locations. So I'm going to grab the uranium piece, and I'm going to run it over to this crafting table. You see I'm taking damage over time, and there is a timer. If you fail to do it within the time limit, you will actually fail the step and die and lose the Easter egg. So you're going to take the uranium piece. I always run it to the left first, and then to the right. So if you follow my path thing, I'm going to head through this window to your left. I'm going to take the zip line right over here to your left up to the top of the roof and then going to attach it to the zip line. Again, if you're in a co-op or above game, you need to do both of the sides relatively around the same time. So have one person do each and then coordinate when you interact with it. If you're doing solo, you can interact with them one at a time because you can only carry one at a time anyways. So you're going to zip line back down to the ground, jumping out the window and run back to your other piece of uranium doing the exact same thing, running it back to the crafting table to get it all mixed together as the trap and then run to the other side, the right side, taking the zip line up and attaching it to the zip line there. So you see me grab it. I'm gonna run over to the crafting table. Again, it might be beneficial to keep a few zombies because as you see here, I might have to blast a few because um, you do take damage over time and you don't recover health during this state either. So you don't wanna take as much damage as possible. Not that it's gonna take you that long to run there, especially if you have stamina, but it is beneficial to not take as much damage. So if you need to kill zombies, you need to kill zombies. Uh, taking the zip line up here to our right, we're going to zip up to the top, and then we're going to attach it in the little zero part, the O there, and that is going to cause them to collide with each other. You're just going to go down to the ground and then pick up the pieces. From here, you notice the timer is gone, so you don't have to worry about a time limit right now. We're going to go pick up the clump here and take it back down to that secret room from earlier and put it into the canister that we received from the train. Essentially, after that, what I would highly, highly recommend is getting as upgraded for the boss as humanly possible, as you do have to run around in between these steps, and you do have to do this step twice. It's the exact same thing the second time, except they spawn in a different location. But again, here's your warning on screen. There is no turning back once you start the second step of the Uranium step. So you need to get as upgraded for the boss as humanly possible, as in packet punching your Cerberus, getting all perked up, maybe getting a death machine for the boss fight, upgrading your armor, maybe getting some, um, some monkey bombs and any sort of deterrent grenades. Please get upgraded before you start the step. As you see here, I interact with the computer again three times. Same thing as always, kill the high value targets, grab the uranium, build the trap here, put them on the zip lines, collide them, and then take them down to the underneath section. It's the exact same thing as previously, but, net, but now, when you're putting them into the trap here, the little containment device that you grabbed earlier, it is time for the boss fight. Essentially, with Valentina, she does have a uh, armor shield over her that you need to break before you can do damage to her. So it is going to be very beneficial to use stuff like Bring a Fire, the Death Machine, and so forth there. Her deadliest attack that she has is a yellow barrage, a little machine gun. If you pop Ring of Fire while she's shooting that, the barrage will not hurt you, and you get a bunch of free shots on her and a bunch of free points for deflecting uh, projectiles with your Ring of Fire. But it's just going to be navigating this. I'm actually going to leave the full boss fight in its entirety for you guys to watch. It's not a perfect boss fight by any means. I do make a lot of mistakes, but we get the job done. Uh, if you at least have tier 2 pack punch on your Cerberus and a couple of extra items, just grabbing items in between, you'll be good to go. But yeah, I'm going to leave the entire boss fight in here. If you guys have any questions, please raise them in the comment section below. I'll be happy to answer any question you guys have about this boss fight in terms of you know, strategy, troubleshooting, etc. I think it's a pretty straightforward fight. It does require some practicing, though, for some people. Um, this is one of the more difficult boss fights in Cold War Zombies. It's not nearly as difficult as, like, Legion from Outbreak, but it is on the more difficult scale. But yeah, you're just gonna follow Valentina to all the places that she goes to, do her stage of the boss fight, and then just keep following her around. But yeah, please leave comments, uh, questions, concerns in the comment section below. If you have any regarding this boss fight, I'd be happy to help out anyone who needs it. Um, and check out any forums, too, on Cold War Easter eggs, if you guys are struggling with any of these Easter eggs. There's tons of people online 
willing and down to help you. Oh yeah, one last thing. This blue aura thing, once she starts charging up, you need to break your line of sight, going prone, going somewhere, break your line of sight with her, because if she hits it, it's going to be a nearly a one-hit kill. It is a AoE wiping attack. Uh, but yeah, with that out of the way, I'm going to step aside from the microphone and let you guys watch the boss fight in its entirety. I'll see you guys here in a couple moments. And with her last bit of health ticking down, we are going to go into the final step of the Easter Egg. You're going to see a cutscene, and it is the Klaus finale step. He has to run these little Dark Aether Canister into the portal, and you need to protect him. Uh, it is a timed segment. There is not a timer, but it is timed. And you do need to protect him as he walks into the light. I haven't had this issue since the first time that I played this Easter Egg, but there was an issue back in the day where Klaus would stop moving forward entirely. He would just stop. And I actually failed the Easter Egg because it said I failed to protect Klaus, and that's just because he just stopped moving forward. I was shooting all the zombies, but he just wasn't moving for some unearthly reason. I have no idea. But yeah, just protect Klaus. He'll walk forward. Once he says, like, Afi Zane or something along those lines, you will be good to go. Um, 
But after that point, he will, yep, there we go. There's the, uh, the vocal part there. He's just gonna continue walking into the light. And then after that point, you are good to go. You have beaten the Mauer de Toten Easter egg. You can throw candy at a jack-o'-lantern. You can do whatever you wanna do to celebrate. The cutscene is gonna roll. And again, you have beaten the Mauer de Toten Easter egg. Today, we're gonna be walking you through the Forsaken Easter egg. This is easily one of my favorite Easter eggs in Cold War Zombies, so I'm very excited about this. The very first step is actually going to be, in my personal opinion, the best way to start. It's going to be starting with the Psy melee weapon, as you'll need to get melee kills later on, and just running up until wave 6 in the starting room. Now that we're on round 6, we're going to step through the teleporter and just follow my pathing. You're gonna get some free points from the Juggernaut machine to your left and just hop on up and open these doors. We're gonna be doing two things at the same time. We're gonna be getting the pieces for the teleporter to go down to the bunker. At the same time, we're gonna be doing this side easter egg. So you do need ether shroud um, and have that to be charged. You're gonna use it on this door and it's gonna open up this secret area. You're gonna grab a piece of pizza there, or a pizza box, and then you're gonna follow my pathing yet again. Thankfully, the uh, the pizza places that you need to deliver to are actually right next to parts for the teleporters, so you can do both of these at the same time with relative ease. So just follow my pathing, and it'll be just fine. As you saw there, I dropped off a slice of pizza and then, or the pizza box, and then I grabbed an item that was glowing in gold, much like the D-Machina step where you need to get the stuff for the ether meter or whatever that item is called. All these items you need for the teleporter will be glowing in gold. So you're just gonna rinse and repeat for all the slices, grabbing all the pieces for the teleporter. Once you've gotten all the teleporter pieces and redeemed all your rewards from Ronald Reagan, I usually grab a set of armor if he doesn't give me one, and then I'm gonna go repair the teleporter. This is gonna take you down to the underground bunker section. You're just gonna follow the layout of the map until you reach the second teleporter leading to the top section with Pack-a-Punch. There's going to be an abomination waiting at the end of the hallway next to the, pack the teleporter. He's gonna come out of it and try to attack you. Just defeat him, and then you can step through the teleporter. Stepping through the teleporter, we are going to be able to lift the lock down and then hit an off uh, sight button, which is going to initiate your ability to do the rest of the Easter egg. It's this button on the wall right here. This is going to initiate a cutscene, and then you'll be able to start doing more Easter egg steps. I'm going to skip the cutscene here right in a minute. Once the cutscene has concluded, you can uh, move on with the next steps. Usually I put dead wire on my size because you'll need that to unlock the RC car later on in the Easter egg. That way you can get the parts, so then I will zip down to the bottom here and do just that. I'm actually going to go over to the arcade section here and hit this uh, machine on the side of the wall to give me a free token. 
I'm going to use this to play the Nocturne Toten uh, arcade game for the free salvage. Basically, I'm saving up salvage so I can buy a flamethrower for a part for the Wonder Weapon later on. What's a nice tip about this uh, Nocturne Toten arcade machine is you can actually apply blueprints to your weapons, giving you more ammo, a sight, etc. Because you're going to want to maximize headshots during this arcade game. As you have limited bullets and your melee is basically scaled back to World at War melee. You don't have a fancy knife melee anymore. But every time you complete a round, you're going to get a spawn in of some salvage. After two rounds, you're going to get a spawn in of a DMR. Again, you can apply a blueprint to that as well. Just kill the zombies, try to beat the time limit, and if you complete all three of the waves in a timely fashion, you're going to get a jumbo crate spawn in, and by that point, you should have enough salvage to buy yourself a flamethrower. After that, I'm going to head back to this section, stand in this corner, and wait for an abomination to bum rush me. If he rushes you and hits the wall, it'll drop a canister you need later on. Next, you can use the same abomination to zap this crystal right here. If he zaps it with his laser beam, it'll get you an, uh, a crystal for the wonder weapon. As you can see, there he is zapping. I'm just going to run around, grab the crystal, and continue with my day. Next, I'm going to run back to the arcade, running around killing zombies, waiting for one of them to trip dead wire next to this arcade cabinet. Once I get one that trips the dead wire, the arcade cabinet's going to come to life, and for 2,000 points, you can summon an RCXD that you'll need later on to get a part uh, for the Easter egg. After clearing out some zombies, I head back to the arcade machine. Again, 2,000 points is going to deploy the RCXD. He's going to have this little bubble thing that does kill zombies, so be expecting to potentially end the round. Jumping over this cabinet and having the bubble knock off this vent, riding the car all the way to the end there, and then igniting it will actually blow up a TNT or a, a TV through the wall that you need for the, uh, the buildable parts near the end of the Easter egg. Next, heading back to the other side of town, if we uh, stand on top of that yellow crystal, it's going to spawn in some waves of enemies, and at the same time, we're going to zap that red dude with the flamethrower, giving us the second crystal. To get the third crystal, we're doing that right now, you're just going to beat the waves of uh, boss zombies, first starting off with some plague hounds, then you're going to get into some uh, avogadros, I don't remember what they're called in this game, uh, and then next up, you're going to have mimics. After all those are dead, uh, you're going to go back to the crystal, and you'll be able to pick it up. Side tip, if at any point you are short on points or just want to get some extra points and you have a token, if you go play Enduro, I highly recommend playing this game a lot. It gives you quite a lot of points and it's very, very easy to get the maximum output basically every single time. If you just follow my pathing on playing the game, we're actually going to be playing Enduro a lot throughout this Easter egg for its juicy free points. And if you're getting kills near the arcade area, a lot of zombies will drop tokens so you can just keep playing this game multiple times around. Next, we're going to teleport down back into the bunker area to deposit our crystal parts, and we're going to get melee kills next to it. That's where the size are going to come in handy here. Getting enough melee kills will cause it to erupt, and will give you your free uh, crystal axe. Uh, crystal axe? Crystal axe? It's one of those. <laughs> it's uh, the alien uh, forsaken-ish weapon. Uh, it turns into an axe, or if you push up on the d-pad, it turns into a machine gun. Then you're going to take it down to the area before the bunker, and you're going to start a lockdown sequence. I don't believe this is a soul box. I believe it's timed, but if you want to get melee kills, you go right ahead. Again, you can grab some free arcade tokens. I'm going to speed it up a lot, uh, like times four speed, and then I'll come back here in just a moment. Once the lockdown is completed, you can grab your part, and now you have every part you need for the end of the Easter egg. You just need to fill the canisters, and I'll show you how to do that here in a second. You're going to go down to the bunker area first, grabbing, uh, shooting all these orbs, changing to the axe, and slicing this open. 
This is gonna give you a crystal, which you can throw like a grenade into the abomination. Once you can see it start chewing, you can kill the abomination and grab the new crystal. You're gonna do this in two other locations. The first one being in this area right on top of the roof. Same exact thing, chopping that up, killing the abomination, moving on. And the last area is in this spawn room. Again, shooting the orbs, hitting the crystal, killing the abomination and you are fully good and actually legitimately ready for a boss fight. You could technically go straight to the boss fight after the step. You are already basically done with the Easter egg. So the rest of this is going to be getting ready for the boss fight. As for getting triple Pack-a-Punch, you already know what we're doing. We are playing Enduro multiple, multiple times to get us those free juicy points to triple Pack-a-Punch our Crystal Axe. As for getting the free perks, though, there is a side Easter egg for that. So if you don't want to spend your points, follow what I'm doing here. I'm going to throw a grenade in the wall on the on the Tombstone room. Not Tombstone, Mule Kick. You go uh, prone and pick up the VHS tape and then play it in the TV area here. You're actually going to play a game of Simon Says. On these TV screens, they're going to light up. It's going to play a sequence of four, so you can write it down. So like three, uh, one, two, four. You can write that down, shoot the TVs, and you're going to do Simon Says, and it's going to stack. So every time it does Simon Says again, you're going to do three, two, one, four, and then the next strand of uh, Simon Says coding that it does. So now we have three, one, two, four, and then four, one, two, three. So it stacks. You're going to do this three times, and once you've done all three of them, all the TVs are going to light up, and you're going to interact with this middle green TV. Uh, another prerequisite here, you're going to need Tombstone. You're going to need the Tombstone perk because you're going to need to go into the Spectral mode here. But after you've interacted with that, you're going to run down into the bunker area and you're actually going to down yourself in front of this area that I'm going to show you here and attempt to use the, uh, the Tombstone little ghost to revive yourself. But you're not going to revive yourself immediately. So I'm going to pull a grenade and down myself right here. This is actually a pretty nerve-wracking step for the side easter egg. So I'm going to activate Tombstone, and then I'm going to run over to my body. I actually take the wrong path in here. You're going to want a, a gun that shoots quite a lot. Again, the Crystal Axe on its gun variant is a perfect candidate for this. Uh, Speed Cola might help you out as well. So if you run back to the body, you're going to be shooting um, these little guys floating in mid-air. You're going to shoot the ones that have a glowing orange head. I'm actually going to show it here in just a moment, a, a zoomed-in version of it so it's easier to see. Yep, that guy right there. So every time they spread apart, you're going to shoot the glowing one and tell that you uh, have shot it so many times that there's only one left standing. You're basically then going to shoot that one left standing as many times as it takes for him to disappear, and then you need to revive yourself before you die. <laughs> this is actually pretty sketchy because I didn't have a self revive at this point, so if I fail this step, I'm basically, that, that that's it for me. So I'm going to kill him, I try to revive myself, it starts to reload, I am on like an inch of health, centimeter health, but I'm able to get the revive off. Once you get the revive off, you will get a free perkaholic. It's going to give you every perk in the game that's perfect for this easter egg and getting prepared. Uh, then you're just going to want to get anything else you might need, like a death machine or the Casimir grenades, anything you may need. You're going to go back to that second area of the game and then build the contraption that you've basically had built since round 10. Uh, after a bit of dialogue, you're going to start an escort step, similar to Outbreak 2's Easter Egg, which I can do a tutorial for if you guys need be. Basically, you're going to follow it along, and you can pre-shoot these orange crystals if you need to. Shooting them is going to give you a crystal that's going to help power the um, the drone that you're actually escorting right now. You're just going to be killing zombies as you go, following along every time that the drone stops. You're just going to go outside of its protective bubble for a second, grab yourself a crystal, and then put the crystal back into the machine. I'm going to speed it up here for a little bit, but it is basically just that all the way down, just constantly refueling the drone. It's a pretty simple step, and you don't take a ton of damage outside the portal, and you won't be needed to be outside of it for very long. The more stressful one is the, uh, the top of the ladder segments there, but it is pretty simple. Once you get to the end, there's actually going to be an area where you can, you know, pack a punch, buy perks, buy equipment, do anything that you need to do prior to the boss fight. Speaking of boss fights, I'm going to give you guys a little pep talk before we go into the boss room. The Forsaken boss fight is basically boiled down to you breaking his armor in four locations. The first two are the shoulder pads, then you'll have a brief uh, segment with a cutscene, then the stomach, then the head. 
after you've done this, or at the, th the same time as you're doing this, really, you could be killing zombies underneath Samantha, wherever she is. If she gets her uh, meter all the way to the full, it's on the left side of your screen. She will then power the, uh, the uh, Dark Aether Blazer turrets, and you're going to use that turret to deal damage to the boss wherever you broke his armor. Again, in the first segment, you're going to do it in the shoulder pads, and then the stomach, and then the head. His armor will reset between the stomach and the head, but the shoulder pads you can do bang bang one after another. Uh, but I'm going to leave the boss fight in there in its entirety. I might speed it up a little bit, but it's basically just that. It's a pretty straightforward boss fight. So I'll see you guys in the boss room here in a second as we're confronting the Forsaken. There we go. So I usually run straight to where Maxis is, and I just get a couple of kills with the uh, the Crystal Axe machine gun variant. Not kills. I get a, a, a little bit of damage to his shoulders. Then I will back up to wherever Samantha is. I'm going to drop uh, Ring of Fire and then break the shoulder pads and get the rest of the kills with the Ring of Fire uh, to fuel the machine gun turret. There's bang, there's bang. I'm going to kill the rest of these zombies with the Ring of Fire Crystal Axe. I'm going to go up to the turrets. Once it's online, I'll be able to drop in and use it, shooting one of the shoulders until the turret stops shooting. And then we're going to rinse and repeat this for the other shoulder. Uh, his armor is already broken, so now you can just get kills underneath Samantha until she's going to fly over and power the second turret shot. Then again, rinse and repeat, grab on the turret, shoot the shoulder, and you're good to go for the first phase of the boss fight. Then he's just going to drop you into a little cutscene segment. Uh, basically just him trying to convince you to stop the fight because if you see the fight through, everyone will be dead because of Samantha, supposedly. So, you're going to ignore him, Samantha's going to drop you in a portal, and you're going to come back to the boss fight again, starting off by shooting the stomach. Once you break the armor of the stomach, you can have Samantha fuel the turrets, shoot his stomach with the turret, then you're going to have to break his head, break his head, fuel the turret, shoot the turrets, and that's essentially the boss fight. So Samantha's dropping us in a portal right now. I'm going to leave the rest of the boss fight in a little sped up, and I'll see you guys here in a second. And once you see the last of his health drain, that's it. You can live or die, either or you have beaten the Forsaken Easter Egg. Um, usually I just let myself die because I think it kills a couple of the dialogue shorts and it gets to the cutscene a little bit faster, but essentially after that you're done. You're uh, just gonna have a cutscene play out. If you've been following all the maps prior to this point, you've been following the Dark Either story, this is gonna be the, the uh, conclusion that you've been waiting for. The story will continue on to Treyarch's next game, presumably, but if you are a big fan of Zombies of Old, the ending of this cutscene will get you pretty uh, pretty excited, pretty fan service at the very end of this cutscene here. I'm not going to show the full cutscene, and I'm not going to play it in sound because it does have a copyrighted song, but this is the end of it. You can just sit back, eat a sandwich, drink a rock star, and just, you know, hang out. Um, if you do like this and you're new around here, please consider giving that subscribe button, the Omega Fist Fire Thorn Punch, as it's free. It really helps us out. And comment down below any content recommendations you'd like to see from this channel. It has been a blast doing these zombie tutorials, and I would love to keep doing them, maybe even for the rest of Cold War, for uh, different games, or just playing zombies in general. I've actually been very interested in going for Dark Aether, as I haven't yet. Um, so if you guys would like to see me farm out some Dark Aether, or play some different games that you have in mind, you know, Dark Souls, uh, Elden Ring, or just any other games. Leave your suggestions down below. I want to make content that you guys want to see. But otherwise, thank you so much for coming out today, and we will see you guys on the next video. Happy hunting, guys.